Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you a fantastic game played between two American chess grandmasters. With the white pieces playing Jeffrey Schonk and his opponent is Samuel Schenkland. The game was played in 2018 at American Continental. Let's see what happened on the board. Schonk opened up with e4 and Schenkland responded with Sicilian defense c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and a6 black goes for Nidorf variation and against Nidorf Jeffrey Schonk chose the Adams attack h3. The idea is that now if we move like e5 then white can move back his knight on e2 and then later can play for example g4 and bring this knight on g3. But in our game after h3 Instead of going for Nidorf type positions, Samuel Schenkland chose g6, he's setting up this dragon type formation. And now white is pushing his g pawn forward, g4, bishop g7, bishop e3, black castles king side, queen d2, meanwhile white is preparing castling queen side and in return already black is advancing on the queen side, bishop g2, already at some point e5 can be a threat right this way, black played bishop b7 and we have a3 stopping any possible advancements on the queen side, knight d7 and g5, knight h5, bishop f3, the light squared bishop is coming after the knight on h5 in order to damage black's pawn structure and we have it, bishop takes h5, although by giving away the light squared bishop at the same time white is weakening the long diagonal. Here we have Kiev's link queenside and rook c8, king b1 and a standard exchange sacrificing dragon variation, rook takes c3. With this move Black is removing the defender and already the pawn on e4 is becoming a target. Queen takes c3 was played and we have bishop takes e4. f3, not the best continuation, according to the engine. The best move is f4 and if bishop takes h1 then rook takes h1, if queen a8 then rook d1, although after knight f3 black stands much better but this continuation is better for white. By the way, after bishop takes e4, if you move away your rook for example play knight f1 then in this case black has this powerful knight f3 move and if queen b3 then black can capture on d4 and then can play queen c8 and then later black can play queen f5 rook c8 thus intensifying the pressure on c2. This can be very annoying for white that's why after bishop takes e4 in our game we have f3 now comes knight takes f3 rook f1 queen d7 queen b3 and this time we have knight e5 rook f4 bishop g6 Rook f1, white is doubling up his rooks on the f file, is trying to organize an attack but black's position is very solid. Here we have e6 and rook f6, an exchange sacrifice by Jeffrey Schonk, the idea of which is if bishop takes f6 then g takes f6 and then white can try to exploit the weaknesses of the dark squares but that's going to be a very hard task, actually even accepting the exchange sacrifice was possible but in our game we have rook c8, here comes bishop c1 and rook c4, black wants to remove this defender and come after the pawn on c2, queen e3 was played, queen a7, knight f5 and we have the exchange of queens on e3 with a very beautiful knight maneuver, white managed to successfully cover this c2 square but now black rook is coming after new targets and also as the queens are exchanged Black is also threatening to capture on f6. Rook f4 was played and we have rook takes h3. a4, meanwhile white is trying to organize his counterattack on the queen side but now comes h6, another powerful move by Samuel Schenkland. The idea is that if g takes h6 then bishop takes h6 and this can be very unpleasant for white, that's why white played a takes b5 a takes b5, still g takes h6 can be met with a nasty pin, that's why white played rook b4 but now comes knight d3, using the vulnerability of the king and the rook, black wants to remove this bishop and win a knight, 
For example, if rook takes b5, then knight takes c1, followed by rook takes e3. That's why after knight d3, Jeffrey Shonk captured on d3, but now he's losing his rook. King h2, and we have bishop takes f1, knight takes f1, rook h1, rook f4, h takes g5. If we have a look at the position, white is only a single knight against five post pawns. This is insane, guys, and the question arises, how is white going to fight against these monsters? And the answer is no way, there's just no way white's position is totally lost. Rook f2 was played, now comes bishop d4, bishop e3 and another nice tactical shot, rook takes f1. Black is simplifying the position, bishop takes d4 was played, rook takes f2, bishop takes f2 and h4. And now the dark squared bishop is facing 5 monsters in an unequal struggle. King b3, f5, king b4, h3, and finally Jeffrey Shonk resigned. If, for example, bishop g3 in order to stop this h pawn, then this time f4 is coming, and then e5, and then g pawn is coming. That's why, understanding that it's over, finally after h3, Jeffrey Shonk resigned. A very nice and destructive attacking game by Samuel Shankland. Tactical ideas were everywhere and finally we reached this very unique endgame position where once white faced this five past pawns resigned. In the end, as usual, would like to ask you to solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the mating line for black. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. It's black to move. Thanks for watching. If you liked this game, give the thumbs up. For more games, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, press the bell button to get notified about new uploads. I will see you in my next video.